Hi everyone and welcome to the latest issue of the uh, WASP development logs. In this uh, log I want to introduce you to new features that come with WASP 04011 which uh, will highly, I believe, highly improve your workflow with WASP. And the first feature is uh, the possibility to actually visualize the result of each rule ahead on aggregation in order to be able to then pick what kind of rules you might want to use or what kind of rules you might want to exclude. While the second feature is a feature that was highly requested and that's the possibility of using the part catalog not only with stochastic aggregation but also with field aggregation. So if you go on and open the files that you can find in the description box, you will find, if you open the rule visualizer demo, you will find a simple aggregation composed of three parts. While, uh, one hexagonal part, one triangular prism and one cube. And what the file contain, the work file contains is simply a rule generator that has no setting, so it's going to generate all possible rules. And then a stochastic aggregation that, whenever we run it, will output um, a certain result. Now, we know from previous tutorials that there are a variety of ways in which you can use the rule generator to control what kind of rules uh, are applied or not. However, the problem with that is that uh, you cannot really see in advance what's the result of each rule uh, before uh, aggregating. So for this reason, I created a new small component that is called the rule visualizer. And you can find it in the rule section. And it's here, you see, it's the same icon as the rule generator with two little eyes on top. And so if we bring this in, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be connecting to it our parts and then our rules. And in this case, that's going to be all the rules. And what this component is going to do is it's going to automatically generate um, a display for each part and each rule. And it's going to show us how this rule will look like. So to view this, here, the outputs are both parts. So in order to visualize them, we're going to go to parts and go to get part geometry. And I'm going to do the same with new part. And so you see that what we get visualized here is all the possible combinations that is determined by each rule. Now, you have few settings here that you might want to use. So the first setting is a spacing factor. So you can multiply the spacing factor that is calculated by default in order to visualize this more or less. If the spacing factor is empty, it's set by default at 2. But you might want to kind of increase it or decrease it based on how you want to visualize it. And the other uh, important input is uh, a plane. So by default, the plane that it's used is the word xy. But you can actually change and move this anywhere you want. You might want also not to have it on the xy plane and just move it in order to have it in a place that is good for you. For example, in my case, I'm going to still use an xy plane. But I'm going to, for example, create a point and, for example, move it a bit back so that it's not on top of my aggregation. Maybe a bit more. So, and you see that now my whole aggregation moves. What you also have, which is, I believe, quite useful, is you will not just get a visual representation of the rule, but you also get the relative text representation uh, that can be displayed. So to do that, we are going to get a text tag 3D. And here you get a plane that defines the location for this text. And here is the actual text. And then we can define a size for it. So for example, I'm going to say 4. So now you see that under each rule, you have um, a representation of the rule as a text 
as well as the uh, corresponding grammar type if you've been using connection types. You can customize this visualization a little bit more by using toggles. So by default, the first input here allows you to add an ID to the rule so that that's going to be in order in a list. And the second toggle allows you to show or hide the uh, corresponding rule grammar. Now what's useful about the possibility of showing an ID is that not only you can visualize this and know what's the order, but you can actually use this ID to select specific rules when you want to apply them to um, an aggregation. So I'll show you how to do that. So for example, I could take a list item. And so this index that you see next to each rule simply represent the order in which these rules are in here. So what I can do is I can take my rules from the rule generator. I can connect them to list item. And I could then create a panel. Right click and uncheck multi-line data. And I could then go through my rules and say that, for example, mm, rule, rule one looks nice. So I'm going to say one. And then, for example, I'm going to say, let's say rule 12 looks good. And then, uh, I mean, I'm just randomly doing it right now. For example, rule 26. And then let's say rule 42. And rule 58. I'm just completely randomly picking right now. But then I could replace my rules. And if I go and reset my aggregation, I'm going to get an aggregation that results from the specific rules. And for example, I don't have anything that goes from an extra to a box and so I might want to add one of them so I'm gonna say for example here rule 22 and so now you see that you have a much higher control over what kind of rules you are and you can also see in advance what kind of rule it is and you see that by having two parts here and so the per part that comes out of BP is the part that would be already be placed in the aggregation. And the second part that comes out of NP, it would be the part that is added within the aggregation. Now you can also visualize quickly what kind of rules you picked. And we could do that by, for example, um, taking our text location plane here. And let's say make a rectangle. And I'm going to do something like 50 as a size. So I just want to draw a rectangle around each rule, as you can see here. And then I can use an other list item using the same panel here and my rectangles. And if I now hide this one, what I see here visualized is the rules that I've been picking for the specific purpose of this aggregation. And so then I could go through and say, hmm, maybe I could have a rule that connects triangles to triangles. So I could add, let's say, rule 44. And I'll now reset and see how my aggregation changes constantly. So the idea is really that you can work in a much more visual way. So you can see the result of each rule and then uh, adapt to um, choose which rules you want in order to adapt your aggregation to work as best as possible um, given the inputs you have. The second feature that is introduced into this version of WASP is the possibility of using the part catalog that you have already seen within a stochastic aggregation and to use the part catalog also for field aggregations. Now, heads up, the implementation is 
not perfect at all and there are still some little issues which I already know how to solve but I decided to anyway start releasing a first version for you to test it and giving me feedback on how this could be used and how well this works with your uh, projects. So if you open the work file for the field driven aggregation with parts catalog, you will notice now that we have a simple aggregation that uh, follows um, a field that is shaped like a gyroid. You can visualize it by moving the sliders down here or you could also visualize it here and uh, you see the field you might take a look is generated with a simple Python script that just writes the equation of a gyroid and uh, oops now it's gonna recalculate so it's gonna take a second uh, and uh, so we see that we have this aggregation. I'm gonna maybe make it a bit smaller for now. Sorry. And we have an aggregation that follows uh, the uh, specific thing. But we don't really have any control over how many parts of what part types are placed within that aggregation. Now, if you look at the field aggregation component, you will notice that it has a new input, which we already have seen in the stochastic aggregation, which is the possibility of using a catalog for controlling the number of parts. So the component that you can use for that is exactly the same that we have been using for the stochastic aggregation, so the was part catalog. And it works exactly in the same way. So we're gonna plug our parts and so we know that we have three parts. So we have hexagonals, hexagons, triangles, and boxes. And then we are going to create a merge component and create three sliders that specify the number of each type that we want. So for example, I could say that I want 120, I want to, let's say, 50 hexagons, 100 uh, triangles, and 100 boxes. So we're going to connect them in order. That's why we use a merge so that we are sure of the correct order and then connect it to our catalog. And finally, we want to use a toggle to define if the catalog is limited or not. And so as we know, the catalog, if the catalog is limited, uh, it's going to place just exactly this number of parts and then the aggregation is going to stop. And if the catalog instead is not limited, but it's used as a proportional catalog, these numbers will be just used as proportions, but the total number of parts will be dictated exclusively by the slider that we use there. So we can create a toggle and leave it to set it to true, for example. And if we now plug our part catalog and reset, what we see is that since we set up 250 parts, the aggregation stops at the 250. And we can also see here that we have 50 hexagons, 100 triangles, and 100 uh, boxes. If I would go on and change, for example, this one to 100 as well, and then reset, I'm going to have now an aggregation which contains 100 of um, each part. Now, what happens if we toggle this to false instead and we now reset? The catalog, you see that it's gonna kind of work, but it's gonna behave a little bit weirdly. And the number of parts is not gonna be really uh, matching the one that you have in the catalog. And this specific case is really working not so well. But so it's going to try as much as possible to match the numbers that you have here. Now that's not working extremely well at the moment. And the reason for that is that, of course, the algorithm has to take into account both the number of parts that needs to be placed, but also the ability to approximate the field as best as possible. And so there are some little bugs, but you'll see that within the probability and the rule that you have, you have a certain amount of control over how many parts. If you want to make sure that the numbers are correct, uh, for now what I would recommend you to do is to have the catalog as a limited catalog and then simply control the total number of parts here by doing a mass addition between all those numbers. And so we're going to plug that into here. 
And now I could change my sliders to have more parts. So I'm going to say that I can have maximum 500 parts per element. And if I now start, for example, controlling them a bit more, and I would reset, now you'll see that you start having a much finer control about how many parts of each type are placed. So for example, I could say now that I want a lot of boxes, and I'm going to then reset. That's going to take a while. Now, that's something really important to understand here is that uh, the problem when using a part catalog and forcing the aggregation to have a certain amount of each part type is that what's going to happen or what could happen very often, as you can see here, is that at some point the aggregation is enabled to place one of the parts while correctly reconstructing the field. So there is a little bit of uh, tweaking and uh, control that you have to do in order to find the balance between how many parts you have in your aggregation and how accurately you are representing the field you're trying to build. So for example, reset. Now, it's gonna take a little bit. So it's also gonna become a little bit slower the more you use the fill. But you now can see that I have a fill that contains mostly hexagons and just few triangles. And so what becomes quite interesting, I believe, is that you start having these areas which become completely flat because the hexagons are unable to flip according to how the rules are defined. And so you can start exploring a little bit what's the impact of providing different amounts of part type. And so you kind of have start having this interesting search for a balance between top-down control from the field and bottom-up uh, rules and the definition of the amounts of the parts that are in the aggregation. So yeah, that's it for this devlog. Uh, as I said, this part, and especially the part catalog, is not perfect, but I want to put it out and see how you guys use it and have some feedback. I'm already working on a version of the part, part catalog that will have an adaptive option meaning that it's going to be able to adapt to the number of parts that are in the aggregation and so become much more accurate in creating the correct numbers. And I hope to release it in the next few weeks. But for now, that's what you have. I hope you'll enjoy using it as well as I hope that the rule visualizer will help you uh, understand better your systems and how the aggregations are built. So thanks again for watching. Enjoy WASP and see you in the next video.